Thank you so much, Lisa, for the introduction. And thank you so much, all the doctors who have joined us today, this evening, to listen to me and, you know, see what uh, I have to talk about. So thank you so much, uh, everyone. So today we're going to talk about case acceptance and clinical success in implant dentistry. More than that, I want to share, this is my journey as a, as a dentist who does implants uh, in his practice day in, day out. So um, I want to share with you all how I have built two successful implant practices and uh, what has changed my life and how I'm able to uh, get better case acceptance as I was getting a few years ago. So let me give you all a brief introduction about myself first. So I did my bachelor's in dental sciences first back in 2010 from uh, Manipal College of Dental Sciences in India. And then I did my DDS from State University of New York at Buffalo, graduated in 2014. And um, I finished my fellowship uh, with the Academy of General Dentistry in 2019. And um, ever since uh, I graduated dental school, I've been working with Heartland Dental, and uh, which is a leading DSO in the dental industry. And um, I'm their implant mentor for the state of Illinois and Wisconsin. I also own a private practice, uh, which is called Dental Arts of Country. It's a sole implant-based practice. We do only implants, day in, day out, single implants, multiple implants, uh, over denture, all on X cases. Um, that's what I do. And Gateway Dental Care is my affiliation with Heartland Dental. That's about me. All right, I'm gonna start my presentation on case acceptance now. So, a uh, little bit, you know, my journey with implant dentistry starts back in 2015. And um, I, I was passionate for dental implants from the beginning. And um, when I started learning it, I realized that, you know, there, this market of implant dentistry is growing at a rapid pace where um, it's not just private specialists or so old surgeons out there, not just who are doing implants, now more and more general practitioners are getting into it and the market is getting very competitive. Not just for the doctors, for the patients, they have so many options where they can they, they can go to get an implants, not just to specialists, even GPs are doing it. So it creates a different uh, difficult situations for doctors or and for me where I feel like, okay, I have learned the courses. I'm excited to do the implants. I've done a couple of implants. Uh, I did I did a course in Mexico with some doctor and we placed 20 implants and I feel confident in myself doing the surgery, but I cannot get my patients to say yes to the treatment. You know, my case acceptance rate was really, really low. And uh, for a long time, I thought, possible reasons for a no could be cost. Patients thought they are too expensive or some patients thought, oh, it's gonna hurt too much. Instead of implant, just do a bridge. I don't want anything drilled in my bone. I'm scared of it. Or some patients felt, oh, I cannot wait three months. I, I want something right away. Or some people felt, uh, I need a second opinion. I don't know, what am I doing? What uh, I need to know if there is any other option. And some people even said, I'm too old to get an implant or I'm not healthy enough. So I kind of thought, uh, oh, these are way too many reasons that patients are saying no, and I cannot build my practice around implants. And um, for a good year or two, I was like, maybe I would do one implant a month or two a month if I get lucky. But as I dig deeper into my conversations with patients and how I was presenting, uh, my cases, I realized there were a lot of uh, other reasons as well, which were acting as a barrier towards case acceptance, uh, which probably are com communication, communication with the patient of the dental team, the doctor, the hygienist, the team in general. Uh, what is the status of the knowledge of patient about dental implants? What does my patient know about implants before I recommend that? Do they even know why do they need or what implants are? Or am I just telling them you need implants and then they say no? Or do they even value what implants could do? Did I educate them enough that 
oh this is going to do great for you or was my body language and tone good enough where they would trust me or have confidence in me or do i have proper systems in my office which will set me up for success so i realized there's some things that i cannot help but there's a lot more things that i can help and it could improve my case acceptance overall so i started working on these unknown reasons and um, the magic really happened for for me and i realized like this is just not me i teach it um, other doctors too and it works for everyone and it's just not implant dentistry these are some proven systems that work for every kind of procedure that you do uh, but we are more uh, oriented towards implant dentistry tonight before i dig deeper into it uh, what i suggest you all to do is try to establish yourself a practice philosophy you know how do you see your patients like for you who is a patient who who is a quality patient who is a quality dental team every day when you walk into your practice this this is the foundation or basis of your practice every day i'm going to share what i feel or what i think every day when i go into my office where i treat every patient that come into my office as the mvp is the most important person patients are not for me patients are not dependent on us actually i'm dependent on them they are not an interruption but purpose of my practice and they are not an outsider we have to make them part of the team and not someone to argue with no one has ever won an argument with a patient so it's not worth it and then patients are people who bring us their needs this is the bottom line it, no one comes to us to just waste their on our time they they want something from us and it is our job to fill them profitably to them and to ourselves out of all the patients we see then we have to figure out who is a quality patient from us so for me a quality patient is the one who who commits to dental visits who accepts what treatment is recommended who agrees to any kind of financial or legal arrangements that we do or the one who keeps their appointments who reappoints for their recare visits and the one who refers us to other patients and values our practice philosophy these are the patients that i strive hard to develop and maintain good relationships through consistent conscious and caring efforts to create happy and paying patients who repeat and refer so these are the patients who will listen to you these are the patients who who you want to do an extra so you have to identify these quality patients in your office and once you have done that you have to establish a quality team a quality team is the one that educates encourage responds reviews and understands the patient you know it's very important that your team is educating right encouraging patients you know building the situation for the doctor where he he set up for success and um, uh they they should be understanding to the patient situation as well so but in the bottom line the the core customer the core of the customer intimacy is in the process of delivering results we have to provide successful results to our patient to build our name in the market so that we can get more and more case acceptance all right so once we have developed our practice philosophy i i want to touch a little bit about how to do how, how a communication happens in a dental office uh let's say there's a patient who calls in for an implant consult or they they want to get uh dentures or something that they're calling me about so when the first call comes in the goal is to gather complete information what's the chief complaint in patient's words what's their insurance what's their you know demographic information what's their health information you want to get all the complete information and what you need to do is so your or your friend that needs to identify the patient's personality type it is a very key thing i'm going to dig in a little more deeper on the personality types in the next slide but uh, personality type is a very important part of the case acceptance once the patient comes in provide them a welcoming environment all the information that was gathered during the first call make sure it is transferred to each and every team member during the huddle or before patient comes in 
preheating is really important. Make sure before doctor comes into the room, patients are preheated by your dental team, maybe your hygienist or your dental assistant but for what the doctor is going to do so that nobody is surprised. Once you come in, connection with the patient is really important. So these are the things I'm going to dig in more deeper in our next slides and listening to the patient. You know, that's the most important part. Patient should not feel that doctor did not listen to me. So, you know, th these pieces of communication has to be fit in like Lego where, you know, everything should make sense. And lastly, the follow-up with the patient. Once you have the first visit or the consult is over, following up, the, following up with the patients is a very, very important part. All right. So going into the personality type. So this is a very common uh, personality assessment test that is there and are followed by a lot of people where they divide uh, the patients or customers into four different types. So there could be a deep personality patient, which is a dominance patient, an I patient, which is an influential patient, the C patient, who is a conscientious or a cautious patient, and S is a steady patient. The goal is to respect patient's personality and customize the experience to patient needs, wants, and desire. You have to establish that what kind of person we are talking to and you want to treat them the same way. A person could be a D person or an I or a C or an S or could be a combination of one or the other. Once you have established that, uh, that your patient is a D patient or I or C or S, you have to treat your patients as they wish to be treated and now how you want to be treated because how you treat them is going to set them the future of case acceptance. You know, you don't want to set up a bad bad first impression. So if you see a dominant patient, you need to know like they are the patients who makes decisions quickly. They are patients who who are afraid of risks, risks and conflicts. They are patients who want direct and bottom line. They they are the leaders. They don't want to waste time. You know, they they are just uh, want to be the leader. The influential people are the ones who establishes connections with others quickly. They are talkative, they are excited, they are emotional, they are very social, and they, they enjoy the spotlight. Uh, they, these are the people who are actually the best uh, source of referral for your practice. Uh, the third is the cautious or the conscientious patients. These are the patients who are very organized, systematic. They, they complete their tasks accurately. They will they'll, they'll plan everything. They have 100,000 questions for you and they want to make sure they are doing it the right way. And they have an analytical mindset. So these are the patients you have to be very patient with. Like you have to answer all their questions for to get in case acceptance. You can't rush into those patients. So you need to know who is sitting in your chair and give them the same experience how they want to. Lastly is the steady patients. The steady patients are the one who likes familiar processes. They, they listen to you. They'll show some kind of understanding, but they might not speak too much. They want to be supported. They are the people who are calm, reliable, and family-centered. They, they are the peacemakers. So these are the patients which might take a few appointments to get into a case acceptance. You have to be personable to them. You have to, you know, a simple handshake or pat in the back or just understanding their situations will win you over, you know. Once you have them, then you will get case acceptance with them very easily. So make sure you are understanding your patient's personality type and you are treating them correctly. Once you have established the patient's personality type, uh, you have to start your conversations about uh, implants. What I realized in my earlier days of implant dentistry practice was would, when a patient would come in, I would start them, start the conversation by telling them, hey, Ms. Jones, you need an implant. And um, most of the time it did not work and they would say no. And I would think it's a cost issue, time issue, money issue, pain issue, fear issue. And what I realized later on that these are all the issues that I am thinking. The real issue was patient did not trust me enough or patient did not 
understand what I'm saying or, you know, he did not connect with me because I did not tell them why am I saying what I'm saying? I, why do they need implants? Why do they, uh, why, why do we, we need to take the tooth out and do an immediate implants? What's the advantage? What's the disadvantage of this? So explaining patients why behind what you are recommending is very critical. You know, that uh, helps build trust and um, patients understand your point of view and your philosophy that way better compared to just going directly into what you think is the best solution. Always explain the why behind your solution to a problem and then you will have a better connection and case acceptance with the patients. Once we have understood the personality and why, um, in implant dentistry, I, am, I felt like it's really important to understand the psychology of different patients that we're going to see who would need implants. Uh, we might see an edentulous patient who probably has no teeth and are dealing with dentures or have no dentures and they're just getting by for a long time. These are the patients that probably don't know that there is a better option than their conventional dentures or they need to be convinced now that getting by is no longer a good enough options. And there is better options like dental implants that could make their life better. Or you might come across partially dentalist patients who are missing some teeth and have some teeth and they're living in the fear that someday in life, they're gonna get dentists, they're gonna lose more teeth in future. And uh, they, in that fear, they don't want to continue the cycle where they keep losing teeth and they keep adding teeth to their partial or a flipper or we might come across fully dented people who may not even know that they have several dental issues and terminal periodontal disease or some kind of an issue where they're gonna lose the tooth. These are the problem patients because they are not aware of the situations. They are not aware of what, what is going to happen in future. So it may take more time to come to understanding of dental needs with them. So you have to be be more little detailed, cautious, and empathetic to these patients where understanding might take a little longer. So make sure you are um, uh, getting to the deep psychological level of the patients before you present treatment plans to them. All right, moving next. Um, once you have established the psychology, the personality, and explained them why, comes to the part of persuasion. Persuasion, like how could you convince a patient to get an implant? I feel there's two parts of it where you are convincing someone to get implants or do something you want by offering an opportunity to gain or an opportunity to avoid loss at the same time. And it is accomplished by questioning the right questions to the patients and actively listening to the answers. So let's dig in deeper into the persuasion on how can you persuade someone to get implants? So what is there for patients to gain if they get implants? These are the terminologies that you should be using um, when you are conversing about implants with the patient that hey, if you get implants done, you can gain self-esteem, happiness, you can have a beautiful smile, ability to chew, no fear about uh, tooth issues in future. You'll have a better life, better health, better, uh, this is gonna be quite a lifetime care. If they are conscious about, you know, how their teeth look or missing space, it's just gonna build up more confidence in them. So these are a lot of things that a person might be able to gain by replacing their missing teeth or, you know, or getting dental implants. What could they possibly avoid uh, or in losses. So if they get dental implants or if they get the procedure now, they could avoid pain in future or uh, bone loss around the site in future so that things could be restored later on because last thing is if bone loss happens, there's nothing we could do. So it's better to do it now than later on. So make it a, a situation where you are avoiding future problems. Uh, you should make it a point where they are avoiding losses by ability to perform implant procedures in the future so that we can we are eliminating the probability that we are not able to do implants in future. And uh, 
we are avoiding unpredictable dental conditions that may arise uh, from dentures or uh, bridges or partials or you know, the bridges or dentures don't last forever. So if they are done repeatedly, it's going to cost you more money over time. So it's it's a situation where you tell them how much they're going to gain and how much they're going to avoid losses. So this can all be accomplished by asking them the right questions. You know, always ask patients the permission statement. Uh, like, is it okay if I ask you questions, some of which might be personal? These questions try helps us identify their emotional treasure and their dominant buying motives. What is emotionally connecting to them, which may lead to dental impacts? What what do they really want when they're sitting on your chair? You know, so making sure you ask them open-ended questions for such information so that they open up to you about what is going on. You know, otherwise you will never know and you will never be able to connect with them. Ask for searching questions that challenge assertions from them. And when you are asking these questions, they'll open up to you. Do not rush to give them a solution right away. Keep listening to them. You know, actively listening to them is the next phase and it is a very important part in the conversation. Asking good questions and actively listening increase case acceptance and communication with the patients. Please state what you have heard. Just repeating the words what you have heard from the patient will make patient feel the doctor is genuinely listening to me. Use the words that the patient just said, and that will establish the connection right away. Most times we all hear that patients come to us and they say, my previous dentist didn't even listen to what I was saying, and they don't feel that doctor is actually acknowledging them. So they move on to the next doctor and we end up feeling that, oh, it was a money issue. Yeah. Our goal is should be to make our patient the most important and valued, valued person in the practice. And when you do all these conversations, there is two laws that uh, I think that I truly follow. Uh, one is the law of three voices and other is the law of three messages. What do these two laws say? The law of three voices say that when we communicate with the patients with three voices, one is the words, one is our tone, and one is our body language. Our words, whatever we say, consists of only 10% of the message what patient is getting. And our tone and body language compromise the majority of our message, and body language is actually more than half the message. So make sure your tone and body language is confident, empathetic to the patient, supportive to the patient, and the words that come out of your mouth is it does not constitute the entire message. How confidently we are talking to our patients about dental implants will actually set up the foundation of trust, which will ultimately lead to higher case acceptance. It is what you don't say that counts. For the law of three messages, it is the message behind the message where a technical message or a commitment message that means, oh, you need an implant and we can do for you all that is is important, yeah, that's fine. But how personable you can get to the patient where patient feel valued and thinks that doctor genuinely cares about me is the higher message, you know? So it is the genuinely, at least the message behind your message. So just as I said before, the simple handshake, that in the back, just being nice to the patient and listening to them is the most important part. Then you should, make your patient feel important. You know, this is the crux of it. Make It is not the words. It is how you deliver the message. What is your tone and body language? How important did your patient feel at the end of the concert? How personable you were in your conversations? These are the deep questions you should look into if you want to improve your case. And then you have to give your patients what they need. And the only way to do that is by changing their desires into necessity. And in the process, fear and other obstacles like money or more uh, are actually overcome. So what are the desires uh, or what, what, is, what does it actually mean to convert desires to necessity? It, it means what patient actually wants and what they need. 
if someone comes to you that you know they they want their teeth to be replaced or they want uh, a denture and you tell them you actually need dental implants they might not know that or they might want that that i want implants but i don't know if i can get it but if you make it a proposition where they feel like oh i need it more than i want it they will accept it and the only way to do that is if you understand that what is their dominant buying motive some people might feel i cannot chew my food or i do not smile or i'm conscious of my missing teeth or it hurts my teeth hurts or there could be so many other reasons but identify re- these reasons and then you can suggest a treatment plan for a single implant multiple implant or any other treatment option but you need to know why the patient is actually sitting in your chair must identify and take ownership of their problems you must make ask questions which will uh, have patient take ownership of their problems like why did this he lose this tooth why what went wrong where a uh, um, previous negligence of dental treatment might have le- led to this new problem so have them take ownership of their own problems and try to dig it into their emotional treasure like why would they need a denture all of a sudden if they have ignored it or why would they need now maybe they have a wedding coming up or maybe they have something coming up so that's their emotional treasure once you have identified all this and connected with the patient at that emotional level there is going to be a shift in their mindset they will trust you more because you have connected with them emotionally once you have converted their desires to necessity now we have to overcome the obstacles that could be fear money trust could be more but these the fear and the money and the trust are i feel they are the top three reasons or obstacles towards committing if they are uh, fearful of a procedure or dental implants try to replace that fear with the fear of future like if you don't do implants i understand you are fear, you are scared of getting an implant done but you should be more scared of the situation where if you don't get the implants what's going to happen in future patients don't know that so if you educate them on that what's going to happen of the or the consequences of not getting an implant supported denture or a single implant or doing a bridge over implant they would understand it and give them reassurance that you're going to take an excellent care of them coming to money patients do it, it it's it's true that implants are expensive but patients if they are coming to you they they are actually looking for the right person who would do it they're not scared to spend money they're actually looking for the right person to invest with so the best way to deal with that is to change cost to a value proposition how valuable it is what will they gain how will they what will they avoid by doing implant once they understand this gain and loss proposition the cost factor goes out of the question they will be willing to spend money because they are actually gaining by doing the procedure this procedure becomes an investment for them and at that time you should have solid systems where you can like financing you know have a third party financing or um have your business assistant take care of it in the right way and in a seamless way where patients feel okay i'm taken care of i can afford this and this is great so have solid systems where treatment plan is presented with confidence and made it affordable to the patient and the trust is established with the communication again explaining the patients why you are recommending this treatment making sure your tone and body language is in uh, the most confident way and you are personally able to the patient so remember you have to explain why law of three voices and the law of three messages so, and these will help you overcome the obstacles so now we have understood the like how to convince how to do but these are our four sorry uh how to start this conversation we know what to talk but how do we start this how do we plan this conversation when patient is sitting with us so i'm going to tell you a quick way of doing this there is simple four steps access uh, by which you can just say, say it with our converse with the patient in a very seamless way 
first thing you should do is have a radiograph or a picture that clinical picture that you took of a tooth or jaw on the TV screen so the patient can see it while you are talking. And remember the four words, problem, consequence, solution, benefit. So you start with the problem, telling patient what the problems are, tell them the consequence of that problem, tell them the consequence of not doing something, tell them the consequence of doing something about it, tell them the possible solution, what could they do, and tell them the benefits of the solutions. That way they will understand, okay, this is, this is what is going on and this is what will happen. Out of these four things, so you should spend the most time in telling patients the consequence because that will convert their current fear to the fear of future. So if they are scared now, they will be even more scared of the fact that if they don't do it, then there will be more problems coming in future. So they will be more willing to take care of it now than later on. So what could be the possible problems uh, where we, we would plan an implant? So uh, patient might come with an infected tooth, which might need to be extracted, or patient might come with an already missing tooth or missing multiple teeth, or patient might come with a broken or a fractured tooth, or patient might come with some uh, terminal periodontal disease where we need to take out all the teeth, or there might be some congenitally missing tooth or a retained deciduous tooth. So these are the possible scenarios which might come in and um, uh, you would talk about implants with the patient. You should know the consequences of these two and you should be ready with these to tell to the patient that now you have come with an infected tooth or a broken tooth, this tooth might need to be extracted. Consequence of extraction would be loss of function, uh, loss of aesthetics, um, they might be continued bone loss. And as the bone loses, you might see soft tissue changes and um, your adjacent teeth might slowly shift into the space, the opposing tooth might come down and ultimately your bite might change and which could lead to more health issues. So it progressively get worse if not taken care with time. So harping on consequences is really, really important. Once we have talked about the consequences, tell the patients, you know, this is, I, I'm sorry this is wrong. Uh, this is the possible consequences, but the good news is we can avoid all those consequences by making better choice today and avoid future problems. You can get a single implant, multiple implant, implant supported removable dentures, implant supported fixed dentures, or any implant treatment, and you can avoid all those possible consequences, but you have to do this. Uh, or commit to it now, then later on. And the possible benefits could be that implants last forever. They're lifetime care if done right. They have excellent prognosis. There is no collateral damage on the adjacent teeth, which are healthy. And they are, you are able to maintain uh, chewing and biting efficiency. They provide you better aesthetics compared to other prosthesis. And there is, uh, it does not cause any bone loss. So uh, your, your prosthesis stay in shape and there is no soft tissue changes as there is not much bone changes. Uh, you prevent shifting of teeth, you prevent TMJ issues and better health. So there is a lot more to win than to lose by committing to the implants now than later on. So that's how you build value to the treatment that you are recommended. All this has to be set out in a very positive, confident body language and tone and in a very personable way so that patients feel connected to you. Patients value what you are saying and understands why they need this. I have made this slide where it's like an example situation where patients chief complained when they came in that uh, I fractured my upper left tooth while eating. And this is how I would word it out to the patients. So as you see, I'll put the radiograph and clinical picture on the TV for the patient to view as I'm talking. And let's say patient name is Ms. Jones. And I would say, hey, Ms. Jones, I'm sorry, there are enough tooth structure. Unfortunately, there is not enough tooth structure left to work with now. Hence, this tooth cannot be saved and it needs to be extracted. This is how I told them the problem and the why this tooth needs to be extracted. Now going to the consequences, 
it is really important to replace this miss uh, this tooth miss jones as it helps you bite and chew your food also it is part of your smile so it is all the way more important to replace it you don't want to go home or you don't want to deal with a missing tooth when or be conscious about it and telling them not replacing it would lead to shifting uh, of adjacent teeth and opposing teeth and this may result in altered bite in near future so the language is the same it's just that you have to tell them and really emphasize on the consequences solution good news is we can avoid all these issues by immediately placing an implant at the extracted site placing an immediate implant will be the least traumatic way to fix this problem the implant will heal and osteointegrate in bone for 3 months and then we will screw in an abutment and crown over it as compared to a bridge an implant does not involve loss of healthy tooth structure on adjacent teeth which and it is much easier to maintain it looks good feels better and lasts much longer so really emphasizing on problem consequence solution benefit is the actual key to getting a better case acceptance once you tell patients about these um problem consequence solution benefit as soon as you tell that patient goes through some quick stages of change or most people whenever you break a news to someone that which they might not be uh, expecting they they might go in they initially go into a shock and denial that oh my oh no am i going to get an implant now it's going to be so expensive it's going to be so painful they get angry about it but within seconds they all try to bargain about it how can i avoid this situation how can i come out of it is there any other options can i get a bridge can i get this and all that stuff and uh, once you tell them no this implant is your best option and you have to do the, make the better decision today they kind of get into a depression state where they say oh, uh, oh no how will i afford this and all that stuff and this is where you help them and eventually it leads to case acceptance he is to be just patient and let patient process and go through stages of changes so that he can absorb and imbibe what is going on and then make a better informed decision because now you have educated them right they know the consequences they know what is going to happen if they don't make the right decision now okay next is treatment plan for predictability what is treatment plan for predictability it's nothing but a cheat sheet that you share with your team members and it has all the possible scenarios where when will you plan an implant what kind of implant cases do you want to do your team must know what their doctor can do and when they will plan an implant for so this is i highly encourage you all to sit down with your team and share with your team your thought process what are you thinking uh, and when will you plan an implant your team must know your your language for problem consequence solution benefits for implants what happens is if they know and they have um um you know confidence in you it helps them appreciate the patients very well so before you see the patient and come and tell them that they need implant your dental assistant your hygiene would preheat the patients where they would say hey in such situations doctor usually would uh, talk about implants with you and um, you go from there so by the time you come into the room the patient has probably always already went through stages of changes and it helps them accept the treatment plan sooner than later okay and also it really is really helpful when everyone in the team speaks the same language that way the patients are not uh, confused with the terminologies in the end it's doctor closing so how how do you make sure you have closed successfully make sure your patient understands everything you have explained ask them the question did you understand what i explained you you know make sure patients does not leave the office with questions you know that's the biggest reason why patients would go for a second opinion because there are questions that are left that you did not answer so make sure you know i always ask my patients hey is there any other question that i can answer for you make a physical contact with the patient you know with a simple handshake shoulder rub anything that can you know connect with the patient 
take a positive step forward whenever. Say yes when patients say yes. It can happen anytime during the communication process when you are talking to the patient. You do not want to ever say no to a situation where patients will say, okay, I was ready, but doctor said no. So make sure you are ready to take the positive step forward. Make sure to use the patient's exact word before sharing it to the team members or sharing with the team members. Um, so that way patient feels like the doctor and the team members are listening to, to them. And always and always make an eye contact with the patient while you are talking to them. Okay, so I'm gonna now go over some clinical scenarios where we'll talk about uh, when would you plan an implant or what possible situations uh, could arise. I have had four clinical cases and uh, we're gonna uh, talk about them. We'll show you what I did, how I did, how did I converse with my patient? How did I get case acceptance on those? So possible scenarios could be patient comes to you and uh, knows he or she needs an implant. So single implant could be multiple implant. Patient uh, knows about missing teeth and wants to discuss options uh, could be dentists, could be partials, could be implants, could be, could be whatever. They just want to discuss all their options, whereas the first one knows that they want implant. The third situation could be the patient is in terminal dentition where they don't even know whether that they're going to lose their teeth. They're just living in the bubble that they just have some kind of uh, dental infection and it will be taken care of. And the last thing could be the patient's coming in with a broken tooth and want you to want you to just fix it. It just happened as an emergency and towards incident, and they just want you to fix it by what are, whatever options comes in. They they might know about implants. They might not know about implants. They might think they might not. Uh, you they they won't be losing the tooth, and you can just do a, a filling or a root canal or a crown on the tooth. So possible scenarios where implants could happen. Let's look at this case. This is our first case uh, for the night where this patient came in and um, he, he, I think she was very direct to me in a way like she's like, hey doc, I want to get an implant for my upper right missing molar. And she had no significant medical history, allergies, no medication. And my team told me that she is a deep personality patient. She was very direct, she knows what she wants. And um, she she just wants to know the bottom line. When can we do it? How can we do it? How much it's going to cost and all that stuff. So these are the cases uh, is, that are easiest to get in case acceptance. On. You don't have to talk much. You just have to be uh, very strong and confident in your body language. And you just tell, give the information direct to them uh, that, you know, you need an implant. Yes, we can do it. And this is how it is going to be. And what else I can do for you? When would you like to get it done? So these simple conversations with them, nothing to worry. These are easy. They, they should be the uh, easiest case to get an acceptance they, because they are just looking for a doctor who will do the job. They are ready to get the job done. But be mindful that for these patients, time is very valuable. You don't want to waste their time. You don't want to uh, talk too much uh, about the process. So my conversation with them went uh, like, Hello, Ms. Jones. I see that you are here to get an implant for your upper left missing tooth. We can certainly help you in this process as this looks to be a great site to place an implant. Do you have questions that I can answer? If you would like, we can get this taken care of for you today. I really harp on the word today because I want to create urgency. I want to create importance to the patients. I want to make sure patients understand that I can help them. I am the person who can help them. And because everyone wants to get things right away. So uh, if I can, I always make it a point that I harp on the word today. And also asking these permission statements or questions that uh, do you have questions or would you like? These people likes to be in control. So if you come across a deep person, give them the opportunity to be in control of the situation. Uh, if they have no questions and everything is good, I, I just tell them my business team will go over the treatment plan with you. And once we have signed all the documents, we will be taking care of you, uh, taking care of this implant for you. Either today, tomorrow, whatever works in your schedule. But you know, don't waste their time. These these patients don't need much details like what implant is, how implant works, how painful it is. If they ask, great, answer it. But 
you know they they they're not looking to get into details with you because for them time is the most important part and you you want to make sure your tone and body language is super confident with these patients so we we presented the treatment plan it was accepted and this is what we did for her uh, we we made this uh, crystal incision reflected the flap and um, we i like to place sterile bars on the buccal and lingual flap just to uh, absorb the bleeding that has happened and gives me a more clear view of the site we did our osteotomies um place my paralleling pin to check my angulation and i i like to ask patient to close the mouth and make sure my paralleling pin is hitting the occlusal surface of opposing arch so that uh, i i'm i'm sure that my 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 occlusion is going to come out right or my uh, screw hole access screw hole is not going to come out to buccal or to lingual uh, and this is my final osteotomy and we were able to place a 4.5 flat implant and i placed an immediate uh, healing abutment and sutured so this case was closed uh, same day easy there was like literally we were done in about 30 40 minutes case two this patient came in and she was like my upper left back tooth is fractured she uh she said i had a root canal done and a post done on it and um, we never did a crown on it and i was uh, uh, in a party and i was eating and i broke my tooth my team had already told me that she's an i personality patient very friendly very social and very talkative so these are the patient you just try to play along with the conversation with them you know they you don't want to rush things patients to that uh, you're not even listening to them so uh, whatever it takes you just to play along with the conversation and be friendly with them they these are the patients who see the funny side in most of the things like you know they they crack jokes on you they tell you about their day she likes they, they just want to be your best friends but again you you just play along with the conversations because these patients are a very good source of referral if you uh, take care of them these patients do not again they don't need much details but they're looking uh, they just want to be in a friendly environment so uh, we came so if you see in the picture patient came in with this uh, fractured lingual cusp and this is the pa and the bite wing you could see that there is a post fibro post in it and it's the lingual cusp fractured in the bite wing here as well so this is how my conversation went with mary hello mary i'm sorry that your upper left tooth fractured as you see in the radiograph and clinical picture this tooth has an existing root canal and a post being a weak tooth it could not withstand the biting and chewing force also the fracture is standing underneath the gums and this tooth cannot be saved now it needs to be extracted it is really important to replace this tooth as it helps you in chewing food also it is part of your smile so it is all the way more important to replace it not replacing it would lead to shifting of a decent teeth and your bite would hurt the good news is we can avoid all these issue by placing an in immediate implant at the extracted site the implant will heal and also integrate in about 3 months and will screw in an abutment and sound over it so as you are seeing my language is the same i am using the same exact words every time but how i am saying it how i am connecting to the pitch is is different you know i'm adapting myself to the personality of the patients and i'm giving them the information what is needed so for somebody like this uh, somebody like me who is a very friendly person so i want to make it a value proposition to her where you know if you don't do this you know your your smile will be altered or you you know your your biting and chewing would be altered and you don't want to get bridge where you have to uh maintain more or you know your Uh, it might not last forever so again going going through the process of problem consequence solution benefit in a confident way is all that is needed and respecting the personality types is all that is needed so for her again she got we got in case acceptance right away she said okay now do whatever is necessary uh, so we were able to uh we started with giving circular incisions and i'd like to place this vertical incisions sparing the papilla uh 
so that I, I for my immediate implants on pin molar, so that I just need to make sure I don't fracture the buckle plate. So I gave them sessions, reflected the flap, took the tooth out eight traumatically, and uh, removed all the granulation tissue. And then I did my osteotomy. And again, I was able to place a 4.5 flat implant and you know, we packed some bone in the surrounding bone area. Um, then I, since uh, I was not, a, uh, the wound was open, I placed a non-resorbable membrane. I like to make a slit in the center and adapt it to my healing abutment and screw it in. That keeps the membrane in place and I can easily tuck it underneath the, uh, my flap and it just stays in there. And then sutures were done. And as you can see, immediate implant placed on tooth number 13. Case number three. Uh, this patient came in. Um, this is the panel of the patient with the, uh, she does have most of her upper teeth and most of her lower teeth are missing. And as you can see in the panel, there's a lot of root caries, root canals and crowns and bunch of stuff going on. So she came in and said, hey doc, I can't bite my into my food. I need to replace my missing teeth. Um, when I look, looked at the, her radiographs, uh, we saw, okay, there's some multiple missing teeth in the maxilla and mandible, some root caries on multiple teeth, and there is existing root canal buildup crowns with recurrent decay. She was a C personality patient. Uh, so she was very cautious, very process oriented, needed details, and she had multiple questions for me. Okay, what? why did I get into this? What can be done? Can you save my teeth? And all that stuff. So I had to be very, very patient and answer all the questions um, with as much details as patients want. We cannot, again, rush into them. We cannot cut out on their questions. We should not avoid or ignore their questions because if we don't answer them then that trust will not be established and case acceptance will never come so with such patients i sit down and i make the chart with them okay uh, uh hey the, these are the problems that you have that you have some multiple missing teeth there is generalized recurrent decay around existing crowns and fillings i show them the pictures uh, the radiographs root caries on the lower anterior teeth i show them pocket depth that you have fair out disease. And I come to the consequences. If not taken care of, this, de this decay and infection will progress further, which will lead to loss of more teeth and worsen your functional ability. It could be more painful, more discomforting, and it could uh, limit our treatment options in future. Right now, your solutions could be you can get upper lower partial dentures or you could get an upper partial or a lower complete denture traditional. But the best option for you is to get an implant supported over denture. It did mention in the beginning that finance might be an issue. So I kind of, you know, told her like, you know, you, we can do an over denture for you and uh, that might be a better option. So once I told her that, I went over the advantages of an over denture compared to a traditional denture or a partial, like why, why would it doing an over denture makes more sense? So we told her that, that the benefits of doing an over denture could be like this better retention and stability to the prosthesis. So you don't have to use some, any kind of glue or adhesive, or you don't have to take it out every night. It's easier to clean, maintain, and it's just better uh, stability. Uh, they last much longer. There's better long-term prognosis with these kind of prostheses, and you don't have to get it again and again. It's made one time. There's going to be minimum bone loss and soft tissue changes, so your de your denture will not become loose over the period of time. So explaining them these benefits will help them overcome the barrier of saving money towards a traditional denture over an over denture. They would be happy to spend something that will last them forever. So I created a value in the treatment by telling them this is one-time investment. You don't have to spend again and again and it, you will have a better lifestyle. So once we, once she understands and I answered all her questions, she agreed on the treatment plan and we were able to place uh, four implants on the bottom and we made her a nice over denture. Now coming to case four. So this is an interesting case where 
uh, as you can see in the panel, patient has a bridge on the top, some fillings, some root canals, but the patient came in with the chief complaint uh, that I'm here for cleaning. I, I, he has no issues, no, no dental complaints. I just want to get my teeth clean. And um, my team told me uh, he's an S personality patient where he didn't talk much and he just said, I want cleaning and he's just sitting quietly, calmly and um, didn't say much over the phone. So these are the patients who, who need help where you have to connect with them. They, uh, in a way, you, you have to oh, have to ask them some open-ended questions so that they would open up their emotional treasure and their dominant buying motive. They will not come and tell you directly that something is bothering them or they have an issue but they would kind of hide that because then they, they just don't lock, like to talk about it or they're looking for the right person to open up to. So, so these are the uh, patients you ask open-ended questions and dig deeper into their, uh, their problems. So they might not accept your treatment plan at visit one, but if you connect with them and you listen to them and you give them good options, they, they, they will probably accept your treatment plan in the second or the third visit. So I asked these patients that, how come you are missing this tooth on your lower left side? Uh, they give, you know, they, they start talking about it then. And I kept on asking more questions about it. Do you chew mostly on your left side? Are you ever conscious about this missing tooth? Have you ever thought of replacing this tooth? Do you know you have options to replace this missing tooth? Have you heard about dental implants? So start asking these questions to these patients because they will not talk to you. You have to take them in to have them talk to you. Once all this is done, I again start my uh, process of doing problem, consequence, solution, benefit. And again, it's the same language, but I have connected with the patient at a different level this time where we got the case acceptance and patient finally agreed to do it after the third visit. So we told the patient the problem is a single missing tooth and the consequence of this missing tooth is that you are biting more on your left side and you have um, uh, more stress going on your other teeth and there is possibility of some teeth movement which might lead to altered bite. We can avoid all that by putting an implant at the site and the benefits could be better function, and avoiding any tooth movement, lifetime care, but easier to maintain with minimum bone loss and soft tissue changes. Again, we got the case acceptance and we were able to place the implant uh, for the patient. Uh, probably, I think it was on the third visit. Yeah, so he, he, he took his time and uh, eventually agreed on doing this. So again, we made the crystal incision, reflected the flap, did our osteotomy and placed the implant. And same thing, this time we placed a 3.5 pack implant and this is how we are at. So I, I would like to summarize my presentation today now uh, where, you know, um, we, I wanna make sure you guys understand the importance of communication in the office and doing it the right way to get the case acceptance. We all need to make sure our patients are people who bring us their needs. It is our job to fill them profitably to them and ourselves. We need to develop and maintain relationships with quality patients through consistent, conscious, and caring efforts to create happy and paying patients who repeat and refer. Core of customer intimacy lies in a simple commitment, deliver results. Identify, understand, and respect patient needs and personality. Create value in implants by offering your patients opportunity to gain and avoid losses. Always explain your patients why behind your recommended treatment. It is what you don't say that counts, so make sure your tone and body language conveys the most message. Be personable to your patients while recommending treatment. Make sure your patients feel important. Give your patient what they need by changing their desires to need. And in the process, fear and obstacles are overcome.
all right guys thank you so much for listening to me hopefully this uh, will help you guys get more case acceptance and uh, if you guys if you guys need anything uh, feel free to reach out to me or if you have questions my email is written underneath so if you want to take it down uh you can and send me your email let me know how you felt about the seminar and any questions you have i'll be more than happy to answer now